Hey there everybody, welcome back to more Final Fantasy 7. In the last episode we got the few stories of Cloud's past and realized that Sephiroth went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And now we made it to this farm area where this where these farmers are taking care of a bunch of chocobos. We managed to get the Materia Choco Mog, which is our first summoning. And yeah. Okay, so as um as a little bit of a explanation as to why everybody's in sadness because it's right now it's kind of what i feel right now because <laughs> what i'm about to do first things first we're about to go ahead and obtain the enemy skill known as beta what you want to do first is you want to put induced sadness on all three of your characters and also you don't really have to get the limit break up for everybody i just have it like that because obviously the the way to be able to speed up battles and grind is by, you know, utilizing these two things. So, it's not really cheating, to be fair, because if I didn't even do it, it still would take forever. I also was trying to get the money so I could be able to get the Choco Lore, because we are going to need that. So, you want to induce sadness. Sorry. Uh, I have to cut that out. And you want to induce sadness, but you also want to put your, um, your teammates in the back row and you also want to at least have one character with at least 600 HP with the elemental and fire equipped to their armor and the reason for this is because beta is a fire elemental skill there are actually three elemental type abilities that are kind of like a mega move there's beta there's the move called trine and then there's aqua bubble we won't get aqua bubble until later on and we won't get trine until we fight ourselves another boss but other than that we're gonna have to fight this guy once you're prepared and ready to go what you're gonna do first is essentially you're gonna try to poison the midgar soul this is the midgar soul zolum which, you know, funny enough, he does have a kind of um, familiar name as a dragon from Final Fantasy VI, which is called Midgar Solum or Solum or whatever. Also, um, both Barrett and Red 13 managed to learn their second limit break. Not their second level limit break, they're just second level. Now, you want to go ahead and poison Midgar Sol Solum. And once you poison him, that's when you can start wailing on him. Mainly because you kind of want to, because at half health he'll start to hinge up. And when he hinges up, his speed will become drastically increased. Which sucks, but you kind of have to do that. So, we hit him a couple of times, and we still keep trying to at least bile the crap out of him, because we still need to bile him. And be sure to top bear as much as possible. Once he starts to hinges up though, do not, I repeat, do not hit him with Barret. Because if you hit him, depending on the person that hits him, it will go ahead and allow him to eject one of your party members. And you kind of don't want him to eject the party member that has, you know, the friggin' elemental slash enemy skill because you need that you need your opponent to you need your characters to, to survive now that he's hinging forward now we just have to do more additional damage to him until he ends up either ejecting cloud or ejecting red 13. it doesn't really matter who he ends up ejecting as long as it's not barrett barrett needs to be the only one to be not only topped off but he also needs to go ahead and survive to be able to you know has beta to be able to finish off Midgar Zolum. So, yeah, that's essentially the entire fight. I hope I actually explained that pretty well because it is weird me trying to explain these kind of fights because it's, it's one of these important fights that you... Well, it's not really important. It's just you kind of just want to be prepared, you know? Fun fact, Midgar Zolum actually appears in Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy 15 and he looks like an exact snake. Now, even though you defeat Midgar Zolum here, what ends up happening is that he will, like, friggin', he will come back after a while. That's kind of the reason as to why they said that you need a Chocobo. Because even if you try, you can outrun him if you want. I don't recommend it. Now that we are at the halfway point of his health, what I'm going to do is a 
essentially, I'm gonna go ahead and use Big Big Shot real quick because since Lunatic Hut also gives us Haze, I don't really have too much of a big deal in doing it. All right, so now he casts his Beta, and two things will be happening. One, Barrett will end up becoming, we'll be able to learn Beta. Megar Zolan will bite Barrett, but Barrett will survive. Barrett will cast Beta, and hopefully this will actually kill him. Because if it doesn't kill him, we are not going to have Beta. No! Okay, so we're back now. And this file here, the second file that I had, this fight, this file is the one that already has Beta already. I just did not want to deal with that again because I have to quit anyways and go back. So yeah, essentially, the strategy that I just did... You're actually supposed to do two things. Don't do what I did, did. Don't use Big Shot. Um, you kind of have to be lucky to let his health get to seven, to like at least 700 so that you can be able to go ahead and one shot him with beta. Half of the time it doesn't work, half of the time it does work. It really all depends on what kind of day it feels like. Then again, I guess I could have just healed myself and then cast beta twice but usually the case is you can just cast beta on him and then it just kills him and then you can just go about your business but that's really it that's all i really wanted to showcase yeah red 13 is like the only one that died it's the, the same situation that happened cloud got ejected um red 13 died and barrett survived anywho now that that's done now we're going to uh, we're actually gonna rest at the end because we don't want to be induced with sadness. Like, cause sadness also, um, oh, that's weird. Uh, sadness also increases your defense for whatever reason. I mean, I guess that means that when you're in fury, your defense gets cut down by half. I'm assuming that's kind of odd. I mean. Well, to be fair, it kind of makes sense. Can I sleep here? Ow. Megar Zolan probably got him. It was a man in a black coat. Okay. Well, can I sleep? Yeah. Of course. You, you, you need the money, as per usual. I mean, you got to get paid somehow, you know? People come in here, try to go ahead and get their stuff. You need, you need to get paid, man. All right, cool. So now we can actually leave. If my throat sounds congested, I, I don't know what's up. Maybe it's just my throat just, ugh. I don't know. I have to actually drink water until uh, if I record like the next, um, the next session. Anyways, let's buy the Chocobo lore. And now we can go ahead and get ourselves some greens, which we are going to need to buy greens. Greens are important for two, um, for two reasons. One, they're important because they're just important Actually, no, these are not the important ones. The important ones are later on in the game. We're just going to um, buy five of the Gashel Greens. The Greens will, depending on which Greens you um, end up taking, it will be the time the Chocobo will be eating said, um, said thing. Said thing. My God. I'm sorry. Um, it will take, it will be the time it will take for the Chocobo to not run away. So the Chocobo will essentially eat the green and it will stay there for a while as you, you know, you take care of the bosses. I mean, not the bosses, the monsters. God damn it. Anyways, you want at least one character to have the Chocobo lore and you need to find tracks. There are tracks almost all over the, all over the world map. There are also different types of chocobos. I'll be going into more detail about the chocobo breeding. Yes, because that's an actual thing in this game a little bit later. Because as of right now, it's not important. But it is going to be important late game when you're going to be fighting super bosses. Because there are super bosses in Final Fantasy VII. In fact, the super bosses are unique to the American version of Final Fantasy VII and not in the Japanese version. We'll go into more detail of that later. Anyways... Go ahead and run around this tracks, and the song will be a little bit different. It'll be basically the Chocobo theme. And then what you want to do first is that you want to go ahead and go to your Gasho Greens, target the Chocobo, throw it at the Chocobo, and then essentially it'll go ahead and start eating away. Also, 
don't shoot the chocobo because here's the thing if you shoot the chocobo what's going to end up happening there's a slight chance that it will get pissed off and use choco beak and i actually think that actually hurts so yeah don't do it like seriously don't and we got ourselves to talk about sadly however this is not final fantasy 9 final fantasy 8 does have a chocobo and this is also this is kind of similar to final fantasy uh, 6. So we can get off of the chocobo, but if you do get off the chocobo, the chocobo will escape whenever you dismount. Sally, don't worry though. When you do play, when you get to the later half of the game, you will have the capabilities of having a chocobo permanently. But as of right now, you can't. Now you can go ahead and cross the Midgard. You can go ahead and cross the, the, um, the I guess the marsh of the Midgard Zolom. Now, the thing is, even though you are on the Chocobo, you can still run into the Midgar Zolom, so be careful for that. Another thing I should mention, when you are on a Chocobo, there are no random encounters, so you don't have to worry about anything. There are many different types of Chocobos, but as I stated before, I will be going into more detail with that a little bit later. So, for right now, let's go ahead and just cross the marsh, and that's it. And now the Chocobo is completely useless, until, you know, later on. But for right now, it's time to see what Sephiroth's power really is capable of. You know, it took us a while to be able to kill the Midgar Zolom, but it did not take Sephiroth any damn time at all. He just friggin' just murdered it. And everybody's aw. Sephiroth's guy, he's pretty strong, I'd say. I know, right? It's a power that we should respect. Yeah. But yeah, that's the... Sephiroth did that to the Midgar Zolom. Why are there multiples of them? I have no idea. Anyways, now that we're done with that. Oh, Barrett, you still sad? Damn, that's a damn shame, dude. I should really get rid of that. Where the hell is the... Ugh. Ah, uh, where is it? We don't have tranquilizers? Frack. Great, that means you're permanently sad. Well, to be perfectly honest, after losing my friggin' teammates, I'll be pretty sad too. And we'll fix that when we get to um, the next area. Anyways, welcome to the Mithril Mines, or Mithril Mines, whichever how you want to call it. Now, there is an enemy here that we can get. There's an enemy skill we can learn here, which is called Flamethrower. It's basically holded, it's held by a dragon looking type enemy. And there he is, right there in the middle. Also, I realized that I did not go ahead and showcase the other enemies on the field, but you know what? That's fine. I, I, I'm not really caring for it anymore. Part of me is like, I, I don't really pay much attention to best theories in game, in these games anymore. But let me actually showcase the, um, summon. You know, I'm just gonna keep this up. So, you know, you can just see it. So I, I don't have to like switch in and out when it comes to it anymore. Also, I need to give Red 13 an actual spell, so he can just not have just cure. This is Choco Amog. There are two variations of this. There's a rare chance that you might get the fat Chocobo, and there's a chance where you can just get Choco and Mog. And that's really about it. Now, we want to wait, because we want Flamethrower... Okay, never mind. Okay, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. And you're dead. And we learned Flamethrower. Booyah! So, yeah. I'm not really good when it comes to best theories. The only thing I can tell you is that, you know, I give names to random monsters, even though they do, I, you know, they have actual names, but I just give them very stupid names and say, yeah, this is a, this is monster A and this is monster B. Does that mean I'm unprofessional when it comes to monsters? Monsters are like the last thing I pay attention in these type of games. Unless it's a very, unless it's a traditional Final Fantasy monster, then I pay attention to it. But if it's a monster that's like, eh, that only shows up like once, then whatever. Anyways, we already fought these guys, so cut. Metro Magic actually works well in killing those snake enemies, so yeah, cool. Ooh. We found ourselves a long rage. Now, long rage material is very useful for your melee characters. What it does is allows them to get the properties of a long range attacker, such as, you know, Barret or Mysterious Ninja A and Mysterious Vampire B. 
mean, I guess he's a vampire. I don't freaking know. Anyways, got no new enemies here. Wrecking Ball dudes. Or Madogas. Madogies. Madogies? Sounds like a very dumb name when you really think about it. <laughs> Anywho. I mean, I have nothing else. Like I said, most of these enemies, I don't really know what they really do that's really dangerous. I do know where most of the enemy skills are, obviously, because the one of the things is, is that I never really maxed out the enemy skill, but you can kind of tell what does have an enemy skill and what doesn't. But just in case, if I ever actually miss an enemy skill, there are some enemy skills that you can miss. Trine is one of them. You can actually miss Trine. Trine only comes from two bosses. It comes from, um... Well, actually, no. It comes from one boss, and it comes from another monster, I think. Or another boss. I don't really remember. Anyways, my source increases spirit. Obviously, give that to Cloud. I'm actually going to take out the enemy skill off of Barret and give Cloud the enemy skill. Because since Cloud is going to be the character that I'm going to be utilizing a lot in this game, I'm and since he's, like, you know, obviously the main character, I kind of want Cloud to be able to have the enemy skill instead of Barret. Because, yes, Barret did have the most HP of being able to take down the big Garzolum. I mean, to be able to, you know, survive the Midgar Zolum's attack, but I kind of don't want him to keep the enemy skill. Hey, look, it's the Turks. So, like, I can't really, I'm not really going to be reading the text all that much because my throat is not in it right now. <laughs> uh, don't care. I'm from the Turks, and you don't forget it. It's difficult to explain what the Turks do. Kidnapping, right? To put it negatively, you could say that. But that's not all there is to it anymore. Um, yes, ellipses. Sir! Who are you? It's alright, Rude. I know you don't like speeches, so don't force it. And explain, Elena. I'm the newest member of the Turks, Elena. Thanks to what you did to Reno, we're short-handed. What the hell do we do? We just beat the crap out of them, that's it. But because of that, I got promoted to the Turks. Anyhow, our job is to find out where Sephiroth is headed, and to try and stop you every step of the way. Well, that sucks. Wait a minute, it's the other way around. You're the ones that are getting in our way. Hoig. Elena, you talk too much. Mr. Sig. No need to tell them about our orders. Sorry, Sig. I thought I gave you your orders. Now go, don't forget your file report. Alright. Farewell. Rude and I will go after Sephiroth, who's headed to Juden Harbor. Elena, you don't seem to understand. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go, don't let Sephiroth get away. Yes, sir. Okay, so basically, thanks to Elena's big giant mouth, she managed to tell us where Sephiroth was heading to the Juno Harbor. Which, funny enough, we're going in that general direction. Well then, where's Aerith? Is she with you? Aerith isn't with us. She's with the others. Others? There's only like two members in this area. Or I should say two members in the group. <sighs> that line is so stupid. I should have just brought Aerith with me so that line wasn't said. I actually don't know what he says if you do have Aerith with you. Got ourselves an elixir and we got ourselves high potion. Huh. I wonder if this can I wonder if this is condensed um Mako. Probably not. Anywho, thanks to Elena basically telling us where Sephiroth is going to be heading, we need to head to the Junin Harbor. But that will actually come into later because there is a wonderful fortress right here, which I'm hoping that we can be able to do. I am going to kind of... Hmm. Nah, we should be fine. Anyways, in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII, we shall be heading to Fort Condor. I've been C6, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. See us.